Hi there, this is Jackie Hill bringing you today another video to help you to stop smoking for life. In order to prepare for that big quit day, it's important to decide on what it is that you want. Now one of the reasons why so many people fail to stop smoking for life is because they don't know what it is that they want. Now that might sound really daft and I can hear some of you saying right now, well Jackie, I know exactly what I want. I want to stop smoking. And that is exactly the answer that I get when people come to see me to help them to stop smoking. So let me expand on this. When people come to see me to help them stop smoking, I always ask them this question. What is it that you want? Now usually I get a range of answers and there are three common ones which I'm going to share with you today to help you think about your own response to this question. So here are the three common responses to my question. The first one is, I don't want to keep smoking. Or I get, I must stop smoking. Or I'm trying to give up smoking. Now, none of these replies, however, answer the question that I've asked them. What I've actually asked is, what is it that you want? Now, now let's take that first response to my question. I don't want to keep smoking. Okay, now you might say to me, Jackie, well, that's clear enough. They don't want to keep smoking. They obviously want to stop smoking. And that is true. They know what it is that they don't want, however. But do they know, are they absolutely clear about what it is that they do want? And when they stop and think deeply about this, quite often they don't have any idea whatsoever of what their life would be like as a non-smoker. They have vague um, thoughts about it, but they don't have a clear picture. Maybe there are reasons for this. Maybe it's because they've smoked all their adult life, perhaps started smoking at a young teenager, or maybe they smoked for so long that they have forgotten what it's like to be a non-smoker. So when you say, or somebody says, I don't want to keep smoking, what they're actually doing is focusing on what they don't want rather than what they do want. And in order to be successful, you have to focus on where you are going, not from where you've come from. You must have a vision for the future. So when you say, I don't want to keep smoking, or even I want to stop smoking, um, if you haven't got that vision for the future, you are stuck looking in the past and where you are at at the present moment. So it's really important to focus on those things that you will gain the benefits that you will have by not smoking. And they're the things that you really want to um, put all your energy and thoughts on, the things that you will really want from your future as a non-smoker. And focus your thoughts on those things, on all those things that you will gain rather than on the things that you don't want. We now know that what we become is what we think about. So if you're thinking about what you don't want, you're focusing, you're on training your subconscious mind to bring about those things, the very things that you don't want. So when you think and focus your mind on what you will gain by being a non-smoker, your mind will work for you in helping you to bring it about. So how do you think about those gains, those benefits of being a non-smoker? Well, once you've decided on what you stand to gain, the things that you want for your life, then use your imagination to visualise them as though they have already happened and experience what the new you will look like and feel like as a non-smoker. To the second response um, that I usually get, which is, um, I must stop smoking. Now that word must really contains enormous pressure, doesn't it? I mean, it's just a horrible word. It doesn't come from a desire to stop smoking, but comes from a place where we feel pressured to do something because we ought to or we should do. 
it's almost as if someone from somewhere inside of us or outside of us is making us feel that we must stop smoking. When smokers say that they must stop smoking, then I'm wondering who is putting on this pressure. Maybe it's from someone externally, a family member, or for example, or perhaps it's internal pressure from themselves, from within. Wherever it's coming from, it has the power to make you feel that you should do it under duress. Now, any change that we do has to be for us and wholeheartedly. Otherwise, we can find ourselves on a slippery slope where feelings of resentment can come in and spoil the whole experience and demotivate us. So it is really, really important to sit down and find out what it is that you want to do. And do it because you, because you want to do it, not because you ought to do it look at that third response. I am trying to give up smoking. Now there are two parts to this answer. The first part is I'm trying. Now I've just talked about must and ought and should and when we use the word try or trying it carries with it a feeling of effort. The word try implies failure. It implies that you're going to attempt to do something and therefore saying to your subconscious mind that you might fail. Trying means that you rely on effort and willpower to see you through and therefore opens the doorway to the possibility of failing. Either say you will do it or not to do it, not do it. So really beware of that word try. Now the second part of that answer is to give up smoking. Now when we give up something, it's because we still want to hold, it's a feeling of sacrifice because we still want to hold on to the something that we, we are being asked to give up or feel we should give up. It's as though you're giving up something you really want to hold on to it, and it can carry with it a feeling of reluctance. I'd like to stop smoking, but it is going to be such a sacrifice and I'm not sure I will like it. Giving it up or giving it over doesn't re it says to me that that doesn't really mean that that person is ready to stop smoking until they start renewing their minds and thinking differently. Because what they are really meaning is that they'd like to stop smoking but will miss it so much that inevitably they will start again. So again, like the first response, it is looking behind rather than looking to the front, to the future and all that they will gain by being a non-smoker. Now, let's come back to this question. What is it that you really, really want? Now, my tip to you in this video is to sit down and spend some time thinking about what it is that you really want. What you really, really want. What would you gain by stopping smoking? And also look at all the things that you stand to lose as well. Although I'm going to talk about those in another video. And then list them. And once you've listed them, start focusing on them. And if, it, if stopping smoking is something that you really do desire, then start visualising what it, your life would be if you were a non-smoker. What would it look like? What would it feel like? Imagine how your everyday life would change and spend time visualising that and getting in touch with the whole experience as though it was happening now in the present moment. Well, that's all for me. I do hope you've enjoyed this short video and if you're serious about quitting smoking then why not contact me. My details are here. You can he email me um, with the following details at jackie at fastforwardtherapist.co.uk or of course visit my website www.fastforwardtherapist.co.uk and if you click on, if you do forward slash smoking you'll go straight to my stop smoking page.
Alternatively, you can visit my store for there are a lot more resources there to help you stop smoking for life. That's all for now for this video. I wish you every success. Bye for now.